Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, and your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. If I asked you to draw a picture of Jesus, what would you draw? One of the images in our stained glass windows? A blue-eyed shepherd holding a staff? A lion, as in Aslan of Narnia, or the lion of the tribe of Judah? A loaf of bread and a cup of wine? A door, a gate? a light, a bridegroom. 
What about a chicken? Would it occur to you to draw a chicken? Barbara Brown Taylor, who has chicks on her farm, tells about discovering a variety of chicken called silkies when she needed a foster mother for an orphaned guinea chick. She had heard silkies were good mothers. She found some for sale nearby. After a little bargaining, she said, I had one rooster, four teenagers, and two hens in my crate when I saw one gray hen strutting around the pen. What's she, I asked. Blue silky, the chicken lady said, crossed between a black and a white. How much for her, I asked. Six bucks, the chicken lady said, impressing me with the gulf between price and worth. That blue-gray hen was a stunner, with the soft herringbone feathers that reminded me of Irish tweed. The black eyes with which she studied me were perfectly round. When I reached out to touch her, she pecked at me, but only for show. It was love at first sight. When the silky and I got home, I saved her for the orphan chick. First I lay on the grass while she and the baby watched each other through the mesh of the cage. Then I placed her inside. Both she and the baby froze. The baby cheeped. The hen did not move a feather. The baby cheeped again. The hen stayed right where she was. The baby took a few steps toward her. I held my breath. The gray hen lifted her wings. The baby scooted right into that open door. When I checked on them an hour later, I could see a little guinea chick head poking out from under that gray hen's wing. Six bucks, what a deal. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus had chicken neighbors too, I guess, and from them he learned about God's wings. Watching them, he knew what he wanted to be and do. But Jesus refers to Herod as that fox. The Pharisees told him he'd better get out of town because Herod wants to kill him. Jesus knew the threat was real. Herod had cut off the head of John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. But Jesus said, tell that fox I'm still alive and still doing all the things he fears most. The point here is that Jesus knew Herod's motivation was fear. Foxes kill chickens because they are easy prey. Herod was just a slobbering, bloodthirsty fox who was out for an easy kill. And Herod thought of Jesus as an easy kill, a chicken. It is interesting that Jesus calls Herod a fox while at the same time he weeps over the city of Jerusalem, lamenting how often he has wanted to gather the people as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Herod is the one he wants to protect his people from. I've read that passage many times, but this is the first time the juxtaposition of fox and hen has stood out to me. Here are some thoughts I had as we imagine this image of Jesus as a mother hen. During Lent, we are called to embrace a radical vulnerability. Yes, Jesus mocks Herod by calling him a fox, but he never argues that the fox isn't dangerous. He never promises us divine immunity from harm. If a determined fox wants to kill a brood of downy chicks, he will find a way to do so. What Jesus, the mother hen, offers is not the absence of danger, but the fullness of his unguarded, open-hearted, wholly vulnerable self in the very face of all that threatens and scares us. What he promises, at great risk to himself, is the making of his very being into a place of refuge and return for his children, for all his children, even the ones who want to stone and kill him. What would it take for us to embrace Jesus' vulnerability as our strength, to trade in our images of a conquering God for the mother hen of God in this lectionary passage? 
Maybe what we need most this Lent is not a fox-like divinity who wields power with sly intelligence and sharp teeth, but a mother hen who plants herself in the hot center of her children's terror and offers refuge there, there at ground zero where the feathers fly and the blood is shed. During Lent, we're called to lamentation. You don't have to be a parent to mourn missed opportunities, broken promises, or crushed hopes. All of us, regardless of our circumstances, know what it's like to feel rejected. We carry painful memories of unrequited love, unmet desire, and unfulfilled dreams. In our gospel passage, Jesus grieves for his lost and wandering children, for the little ones who will not come home, for the city that will not welcome its savior, for the endangered multitudes who refuse to recognize the peril that awaits them. His is the lamentation of long thwarted, helpless yearning. How often have I desired to gather you? It is a lamentation for all that could have been in this broken, resistant, clueless world. It is a lamentation for the real wounds, for the limits we live with as human beings, the lasting wounds. Sometimes, like Jesus, the mother hen, we can't do what we most desire to do. We can't give what we deeply long to give. We can't save the loved ones we ache to save. So, how might you be called to lamentation during this holy season? What do you yearn for that eludes you? What missed chances, failed efforts, or broken dreams tug at your heart and call you into mourning? How might we, the church, lament with Jesus over our homes, our cities, our countries, our planet? How might we stand with him in the Jerusalems of our lives and weep our sorrow? into new hope. And finally, during Lent, we are called to return. You were not willing, Jesus tells his wandering children. You would not come back. You would not relinquish your right to yourself, not even when your life depended on it. The image of chicks snuggling under a mother hen's wings is an image of gathering, of community, of intentional oneness. It requires a return, a surrender, a tempering of our wild lone rangerism. What in us is not willing to be gathered this Lent, not willing to surrender to community, to a larger whole, to the wings of God's care and God's people? Where in our lives have we chosen to go it alone, spurning love because love is too risky? I won't lie, loving a vulnerable mother hen God is the riskiest thing some of us can imagine doing. And yet a yearning mother hen is the mother we belong to. She's the one weeping for us. She's the one calling us home. Her body and her heart are on the line, and yet her desire is fixed on us. She will never, ever stop calling us home. Jesus lamented, how often have I desired to gather you? During this wilderness season of repentance and transformation, may the desire of Jesus become our desire too. Like the chick, may we take those first steps toward Jesus. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church in the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who do confess your holy name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, Perrin, and Tony, for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for all the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit and give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them with joy the joy of your salvation, especially Anton, Ben, Bob, Diane, the Dolan family, Doris, Ella, Emily, Jean, Avori, James, Jane, Jason, Jennifer, Lily, Lisa, Lynn, Mary, Margaret, and the Mills family, Phyllis, Sophie, Stephanie, Ted, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of the Ukraine and at this time, we pray for the first responders and the, in the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate, celebrate his, his death, death and resurrection, resurrection as, as we, we await, await the, the day, day of his, his coming. coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, be known, known to us in the breaking of the bread. bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Using the prayer adapted by our National Cathedral, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion, but at that moment in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion physically. As we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May the Holy and Strong One, the one true God, scatter the darkness from before your path and deliver you from the powers of evil and strengthen you in all goodness, keeping you in eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, and remain with you this day, this season, and forevermore. Amen.